with all that said, let's get on talking about candlesticks. Now, most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis, but they use, what they usually learn is useless. For how many of you guys are out there in the audience tonight that are just starting out trading? Believe me, everything you read about candlesticks, most of it's wasted time and useless. Okay, because most pieces of information talk about candlestick patterns and candlestick is pattern recognition. In other words, when this candle does that and the next candle does that and the next candle does that, you have a pattern that's exhibited called say, you know, one of many, three white crows or three black crows. When you get these three black crows, you're supposed to do this. Well, we know in our type of trading, trading based on a formula that when this appears, you do that, becomes a loser. Now, candlesticks been around for a very, very long time. But you know, the markets didn't trade four digits to the right. There wasn't online trading. There wasn't the internet. And there wasn't assets being monitored that close. So markets didn't move that quickly. You know, and candlesticks were developed in the 17 and 1800s for rice traders and then moved over to the financial markets. Now, candlesticks make a great charting tool. Let me actually, let's pop up a live chart here for a second here. Okay, let's go to my teaching chart. Okay, so we're looking at the Euro US dollar on a one hour chart using candlesticks. Now, we all should know the basics of candlesticks. Now, we intermix, unfortunately, three different things that we get from candlesticks. One is you get candlestick charts. Now, I love my candlestick chart. Let me take my triangles off of here. Why won't they go? Uh, there we go. Okay. And candlesticks are a way of reading or looking at a chart as opposed to bar charts and line charts. Now, when I first started trading, we all used bar charts. And where's my bar charts? We'll you. We all use bar charts. Now, why is my chart changing? That's weird. It's not letting me turn off my candlesticks and turn on my bars. That's very odd. Let's try it here. Oh, I see what it's doing. You know, the trading view is a great chart provider, but they're constantly, constantly, constantly doing development. And every time they do this, they change the way things work. Now, it used to be for years, you click on bar charts and it would give you a bar, but it would always be a black bar. Now, some developer who knows nothing about finance, who's developing all these tools, doesn't realize nobody uses green and red bars. They use black bars. It's the standard of the marketplace. But no, they want to they give us more stuff than we need. So let's go change these bars back to black. Okay, so 
back when I started trading, we all used bar charts. Now bar charts, because we didn't have computers, we were sitting in the pits and we were hand charting, bar charts were a lot easier to sit there with your graph paper and your pencil and put it high, a low, and open the close. You know, a dot at the high, a dot at the low, a bar across the open, a bar across the low, connect those bar, those prices with a, a line, and you have a bar chart. Just like we have right on. So each one of these is a bar. They're boring. And we used to learn patterns and we would read the print. As our computers came into play, we originally had candlestick charts, but they, they didn't give us any, they were in red and green, but they didn't give us any adjustments. They didn't allow us to do anything. As developers came along, they were develop charts that were just as easy as bar charts, and they were colorful. And we could see clear cut patterns clear-cut price movements by using a chart that had candlesticks on it. We're not talking about trading with candles. We're just talking about looking at your chart. So this chart, as opposed to this chart, helps tell us a little bit more, even though the numbers are exactly the same. Every candlestick gives you the open, the high, the low, and the close, just like a bar. So with a bar, we put a line across at the open, a line across at the close, a dot at the highest price, a dot at the lowest price, and we connect them together. If we step up the ladder from the open to the close, it was a bullish session. Okay. With a candlestick, instead of the bar, we put a line across at the open, a line across at the close, a dot at the highest point, and the dot at the lowest point, we connect the dots to the bars and they connect the bars to each other. So the same four pieces of information. This part of a candlestick is called the wick or the shadow. This part of a candlestick is called the bar. It's called the body of the candle. And again, this is the wick or the shadow. Okay. Same exact information as a bar chart. But we can see more in our trading using candlestick charts. Okay. Now, hold on, so let me just clear this off. Now I'm gonna go over this real quickly because some of you guys are new and don't know it, but a candlestick chart is made up of typically reds and greens. Seeing lots of green doesn't necessarily tell you to buy something. Seeing lots of reds doesn't necessarily tell you to sell something. Keep in mind, a lot of times you'll hear about black and white candles because before we had these big, beautiful colored charts and we were hand charting, we were sitting there with a pencil and you would do the same thing. You put a dot at the open, a dot at the low. I mean, a, a dot at the high, a line across the open, a line across the, the close, a dot and a dot. We would connect the bodies and the wicks. If the open, if you were stepping up from the open to the close, that means you had a bullish session. It means you would leave the candle like this. But if you step down from the open to the close, you would take the side of your pencil and color in the candle. So what did we have? We had black candles and white candles. Black candles were the ones like I just colored in here with the yellow. The, the white candles were the ones we didn't fill in the center. Okay. As we moved to computerized charts and have red and green candles, it became red and green. One shows us bullish session, another shows us bearish. But a lot of literature you read about candlesticks was written a while back. And then a lot of the candlesticks patterns are also their, their explanations are based on, and their names like you have 
three white soldiers, three black crows. You're not going to change them to three green crows. This is the name it's had for ever. So keep that in mind. Now, the fact remains with candlesticks, we might use red and green because they're the most popular, but it doesn't make a difference. If you wanted to use purple, and gold, as long as you knew which one was bearish and which one was bullish, it's perfectly fine. Doesn't make a difference. And there's actually some Forex brands that use their brand colors in their defaults for their candles. You can change it whatever way you want. But as long as you know the difference, you're fine. Now, this is candlestick charting. It's simply looking at price or price action on the charts and being able to see clearly better than with a bar chart or a line chart what price is doing at the moment. Then we went on to pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is a memorization of specific patterns. Now today, thanks to modern camp, modern charts again, guess what we can do? We can go in and click on doji. We can add bullish engulfing. We can add all the candlestick patterns we want directly onto our charts and tell the computer to find them for us. So whenever there's a bullish, because these are candlestick patterns, Patterns have specific definitions. So, for instance, here we have a bullish engulfing, and it tells us exactly what it is and what we're supposed to do. Well, are you a robot? Are you just going to do something because it happened on a chart and you're supposed to do it? Let's say at the end of a given downtrend, there will be most likely a reversal pattern. Distinguish the first day that this candlestick pattern uses a small body followed by a a day where the candlestick body fully overtakes. So a bearish engulfing or bullish engulfing is the next candle fully engulfs the previous candle. Okay. But that again is pattern recognition because it tells you it's not essentially this pattern to completely overtake the range, rather only to open and the close. Okay. Now, when this pattern exists, you're supposed to do something. Well, that's a terrible way to trade. Okay. Now, there are things like dojis, bullish engulfing haramis that are noticeable and might add to your visual recognition and your mind understanding reading price action on a chart. But to waste your time memorizing the 72 patterns the 36 most popular, the 16 most important, and try to track them down on your charts, it's a waste of time. And if you're going to trade because a computer tells you here's a pattern, that's also a waste of time. But today, as I showed you, we have candlesticks on our chart and we can have our patterns on our charts. The third way of using candlesticks is candlestick analysis. This is what is most effective about candlesticks is being able to read what price is trying to tell you now to understand what trade might be offering, what the market might be doing, which direction you might want to be trading. It is price action or reading candles, reading price action with the use of by candlesticks. So I'm going to just clean up my screen here. And let's jump back to my PowerPoint for a second. So as I mentioned, the standard approach to candlestick analysis is basic pattern recognition, which may fail 
in most real time trading. Now, you can't skip straight to advanced candlestick analysis without knowing some basics first. But don't worry, we got you covered. So we went over it all, right? Yep. Now, if you keep in mind that each candlestick simply tells you who is in control of the markets at that moment, you will be able to understand what price is telling you. We do this by understanding the battle between the bears and the bulls and being able to see this between the size of the, the current candle, the length of the wicks of the current candle. So it's the shape and the size of the candlestick you're looking at also in relationship to the current trend and its relationship to the previous candles that helps you predict or analyze what price action is trying to tell you. So memorizing things like this doesn't help you. So keep in mind that that was can pattern recognition. It's not candlestick analysis. And for the price action trader, it's useless. Thinking about candles as just patterns is counterproductive. It makes you a worse trader. It could lead you to make massive mistakes. Why? Giving a pattern a set of definitions leads to tunnel vision. When you see that specific pattern, you assume that something will happen, but it's not how candlesticks work. All candlesticks need to be assessed based on the candles around them and many other factors. Because the truth is, what we're looking at on here could mean one thing in one situation and could mean a different thing in a different situation. And it could be completely differently interpreted based on the trend that is going on. So really, the right way to use candlesticks is to interpret the story of price. And what you, what you may ask is, what is the story of price? Well, first, every single candle on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you get the story of price. So the foundation of my Forex and CFD trading strategy is reading and understanding the story of price. Reading and understanding the story is vital. It's vital because it gives you one important question. Who is in control of the market now? Now, the answers can only be one of three things, buyers, sellers, or neither. So being accurately to answer that, being able to answer that question accurately is vital because if you were enter, about to enter a short trade, but you saw that the buyers were in control of the market or the bulls were in control, maybe you say, uh-oh, it's not a good time to make this trade. So let's try to make it easy. We're not gonna make it complex because you can pick this up and drop it on to your charts or whatever you want because it works. We're not talking about only three candles, we're only talking about six candles, but the only thing we can talk about in real life is going this way. Because what happened back here in your strategy or analysis might help you, but you can only trade going forward. But you can only learn by example. You can only learn by seeing what's happened previously because I can't predict what's gonna happen in the future. I can't show you what's happening in the future till the future gets here. So if you take a look at the three highlighted candles, and for this case, we're talking about three. It could be five, it could be seven, it could be 14, it could be 20. Doesn't make a difference. We're using three is because three is kind of the minimum. Whether you're looking at a 15 minute chart or one hour chart, one day chart. Now, it's easy to look at those three red candles and conclude that the sellers are in control of price, right? If you were forget, forget here, we're looking at these three candles and the new candle is established. Well, at this point, 
you might say, hey, look at that. I got a new downtrend forming. I'm going to sell into the markets. Okay. Because we're concluding, wrongly so, that the sellers are in control. I don't know why. There we go. Because the candlesticks all closed lower than they opened. They all created new lows beyond the previous low. And they all had small upper wicks. Right? Perfect setup. Sellers in control, downtrend happening. But remember, candlesticks are always about looking at the current candle and the ones preceding it. So now what do we get? This is the candle that's establishing itself now. Okay. What does this tell us? Well, by analyzing what we're looking at, it's trying to tell us something. It has a short upper wick. It's got a small body and a long lower wick. Well, when this occurs, this is called an indecision candle. Now, these indecision candles happen all the time. They're not rare. You get three, five, seven red candles, and the reds can be intermixed with greens as long as they're moving down. So you can have three reds, one green, three reds, two greens, three reds, but it's still prices moving on a steady downflow. Now, this indecision candle pops up all the time. What is it made up? It's made up of a small body. That's important. Now, there's no rule about how small the body has to be. It's got to be a small body, though. In a downtrend, coming off of a down movement, it needs to have a long lower wick and a short upper wick. If we were to reverse coming off of an uptrend, it's got to have the opposite. It's nice if that candle is in the opposite color but it doesn't have to be. So what's an indecision candle? An indecision candle occurs when neither buyers or sellers can gain or maintain control of price. They are common, but if used the right way, they can be very powerful. So let's take a look at this trend and keep on taking a look at it. And it's not even a trend, it's really just price action, price moving along. So remember on a chart, we had that here, and then we moved into these, price moved into these three upward movements. And look at that, we got another indecision candle. Okay. Because that other indecision candle told us that the markets were undecided, but they didn't tell us it was gonna do anything. But then we saw it move into a reversal and uptrend. Nothing that was tradable. But then markets moved up and we got the opposite indecision candle. But where did that indecision candle form? Now remember I kept telling you it's important to see where the candle's forming, whether it's forming on a trend line. In this case, when it's falling on a support zone or resistance zone. When we get an indecision candle smack on a resistance zone after a move up, we get this indecision candle. It's the opposite color of the move. Short lower wick, long upper wick, small body. Price is trying to tell us something. It's trying to give us a trade alert. Now. Me, I don't use indicators and oscillators. I don't make my trading overcomplicated. I want somebody to tell me I have a buy or sell opportunity. Because me, it's more about setting my targets, my risk reward ratio, my stop losses. Now, when price hits resistance or support, we get an indecision candle forming right on that zone. So in this case, like I said, it had a large upper wick, small lower wick. 
in reverse downtrend is just the opposite. So altogether, this indecision candle forming right on the strong bullish candles, since the power shifted from a decidedly bullish market to an undecided market. While the sellers are not in control, neither are the buyers. Now, none of this tells us whether that upward movement is going to continue or that upward movement's over and it's going to form into a reversal. None of us tells us anything for sure. But it does give us an opportunity. So if you remember, we talked about resistance being a sell area, support being a buy area. So the image shows us three strong bullish candles heading into resistance area and then bam. Price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. This tells us the sell area is working. When price pushed into these sell areas, sell orders were triggered and buyers could no longer continue up. That's the story of price on this particular chart. But this is how we're using our candlesticks without pattern recognition, without pattern memorization. Okay. We're looking at what price action is telling us on our chart with our candles. And this gives us a nice little price action trade setup. Price action allows you to take many different types of trades and reverse trades, reversals, continuations, range swing, breakouts and scalp trades, just to name a few. Now, in this case, we're taking a look at a reversal trade. We saw the markets move up, hit indecision. And that tells us the markets are going to reverse for sure. But we have three opportunities at this point. Okay. Markets could reverse and come down. Well, we have two opportunities. Markets could reverse and come down, or markets could continue and go up. But we have a price and a point that we might be able to establish a trade. And by being smart and shrewd, we can establish a trade that's got a high prof probability with low risk. Because we have three possible trades we, that could be seen. We could take a buy Since we're looking at a reversal setup, we could use this candle to decide where we would enter or sell, where we would put our stop loss, and where we would put our target point. Okay. We could then execute a trade or set up a trade to be executed okay, on the next candle at a price lower than the previous close. We could put our stop loss right here and our take profit right there. Now, if the price happens to continue up, guess what? Our trade never gets executed. If the price moves down and gets executed, we could actually ride the markets out and take some profit. If we were the price to trade were to get executed, but the price then bounces and reverses up to continue that trend, we get stopped out here with a small little loss. So what do we end up? We have a possible trade never getting executed. We have a possible trade getting executed in the wrong direction with a very close stop loss small little loss, small little risk, or a trade moving in the direction we selected with a safety net of our stop loss that we have placed and a potential target that is within our risk reward ratio. Easy setup. We've got everything we need. And now this happens quite often. The important part is indecision candles pop up all the time. It's looking at all the pieces of the information. You're looking at the preceding trend, 
the indecision candle, and the reversal trend. What's the preceding trend? The preceding trend is a strong move by either the bears or the bulls heading into that next support or resistance area, depending whether we're moving up or down. Like I said, it can be three, five, seven, nine candles moving towards the direction of the next major resistance. You've already got your support and resistance on your charts because you shouldn't be trading anything that you don't have support and resistance on. Okay. And then we're looking for that indecision candle to form directly on that resistance area or support area. So preceding trends are simple. You see a strong move heading into an area of support or resistance. You can consider that a previous preceding trend. There is no three, five, seven, nine, 14 candle. There's no trend line. It's using your eyes to look at what price is doing on your chart. Then we get the indecision candle. Now the indecision candle is very important. It must have a, if it's hitting resistance, it must have a short body. Well, all the short body, small lower wick, large upper wick. Okay, must. That is your affirmation. In a downtrend, the exact opposite. But it must have these three components. If the indecision candle does not form on or near an area of support of resistance, it's not a valid reversal setup. They occur all the time. So indecision candle and a bullish preceding trend indicates that buyers are possibly losing control and sellers may be gaining control. In a bearish preceding trend, it indicates just the reverse. So as I said, see, this is a nice preceding trend and it's made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine candles. And look at that, you have three little weird indecision candles in between them, but they don't mean anything to us. Until we get to that resistance support area, nothing. And the reversal trend is the third and most important part of the reversal setup. This is where you take advantage of. After the preceding trend stalls at the support and the indecision forms, you often see a reversal trend. In this case, we saw a transition of power from the bullish to the bearish. So where do you enter the trade? Well, you know what a bullet a reversal trade looks like. You know that you could enter after indecision and before the reversal trend. I will show you how to use my strategy to trade these reversals. Entering trades doesn't have to be difficult. Remember, my goal is to keep it simple. So how do you get in at the right time? Well, this is what's important. You can't wait for all kinds of confirmation. You must see that indecision candle forming and you must set up your trade. You've got your, your target point, you've got your reversal point, your stop loss point, you have your take part target point, you have your entry point, all based on that indecision candle. Remember, you need to look at where the next major support or resistance area is because that's what you're gonna to use to calculate your risk reward ratio. Because if there's a major price element in between, whether you're using FIBS, whether you're using support and resistance, however you're getting it, there must not be something to inhibit it. If it is, you have to move your target point to that level and then recalculate your risk reward ratio. So keep in mind, don't want to make a comment because failed trades happen. There's nothing you do about them. But by getting in at the right time lowers your percentage of failed trades. And by placing your stop loss at the right point, you reduce your losses in those trades so that you don't get in too late. And you make more profit on your correct trades to offset your losing trades. So if you wanted to wait for confirmation, where would you get the confirmation? Too many people want to wait for the next candle and next candle. And there are part of my strategies that we would use an indecision candle, a confirmation candle, and then a trade candle, but not for the reversal trade setup. Because 
Sometimes that reversal trade happens all in that next candle. And if you didn't get in at the right time, you've lost a good deal of your, your potential profit. So it's pretty easy. Here you have your indecision candle. You set your entry point right below the low of that indecision candle, your stop loss at the high of the indecision candle, and your entry point to the beginning of that trend up, except that there's a resistance area in between, and calculate that for your stop, your risk reward ratio. Okay, so again, if this next candle forms here and goes there, guess what? You never entered the market because your trade never got executed. If the market happened to fall down here and then reverse back up, executed here, stopped out there, small stop loss, small loss, executed here, markets fell back to their previous level, guess what? You made some nice profit. But there are many ways to read the story of price using candlestick analysis. But this is just a reversal trade. So remember, stop loss, entry point, target point. If you have a major resistance area in between your target point, you've got to reanalyze your risk reward ratio by bringing your target point down lower. And if it doesn't fit your risk reward ratio, forget the trade. Easy enough. So I always start out with my trend line, then my support and resistance levels, then I look at price action. Now there is one kicker. You, you look at volume to confirm. Volume should be lower when price moves into that indecision zone and price should start, volume should start increasing right after the formation of that indecision candle. So in trading, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate simple concepts. Sure, some of the concepts in trading are not the sort of thing that you would intuitively know, but many things are easy. You just must know what to look for. So remember, if you have any questions, type them into the screen. Your email address will be registered and someone will be glad to send you a detailed answer. Thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading week. Bye now.